Hey everybody, it's David here. I can't believe how long it's been. It's probably been nine months since I made a video. I hope you're all doing well in these times. I know personally it's been hard to kind of get the home to myself and get the focus that I need to, to make videos, but I, I want to kick things off again. And I want to start, want to start by uh, you know, it's not a big milestone for any YouTube channel, but I'm happy to pass 500 even with the lack of activity here. So thanks to all of you who joined as subscribers and to those who stuck around. And the first thing I want to do, uh, the first video, I, I definitely want to get back to my kind of like liquid ABC videos and whatnot. But um, they can be a bit ambitious and take longer to record. So I also want to keep dishing off subjects that kind of pop up on the internet. Uh, and one of them were this uh, discussion on the um, Real Full Artists Facebook group and Raymond here asked when he's importing RPC particles into Maya he's not getting any color for the particles does anyone know how to make this work so we had a chat about that and I kinda thought this might be something that's useful for others as well so I wanted to to show you that uh, the color that the particles have inside a Real Full is never burnt into the particle itself I have this pretty simple sim here with uh, diverse particles and if we look in the export central going f12 or export export central on that particle object um, you'll see um, that the attributes we have does not include color it's position velocity id force density etc i uh, don't really use too many of these velocity is the one we want to use in this case because that's that's what's going on in real flow. By default, you have a blue to white gradient, and that gradient is mapped over the velocity value inside of the particle. And uh, so any particle will have a velocity value. You can see kind of like the minimax, like the slowest and the fastest particle in the sim right now. You can see those here on the domain under display, uh, and you twirl out this property velocity uh, by the automatic range. So this is actually where you turn this off. This is where you set the value manually, in order to tweak how this ramp is applied. But if you keep it at automatic, you can use this to debug and see, well, the fastest particle in the scene right now is 7.4. Now it's eight, kind of skips over nine sometimes. So that would probably be my max. And uh, if I stopped emitting and this would all kind of settle down, then obviously that value would go down. We know now this is the max value. You can also go into tools, particle tool tip, and hover over any particle and you'll see I can't show you with my mouse because the menu disappears but the fourth line from the top or the third actually says velocity and um, that is the vector so it's not the magnitude of uh, the speed but the, the fourth line speed as the magnitude so the fast this particle is 5.4 units fast and that's in this case a combination of the X Y and Z and um, this has a world speed of 3.6. And you know, the way we apply this ramp, we know that the brightest particles are the fastest ones. And these are gonna be in the eight, nine range, I would imagine. Two. Not that fast, these particles. But anywhere, anyway, somewhere in here, there's a particle that's, that's uh, 8.5 units in speed even though I can't find it right now here's one that's 7.6 so this value is just like a previous but uh, agreed it can be pretty nice to use this uh, when rendering uh, but it's never burnt in uh, we need to recreate this in Maya so I want to show you how to how to do that so I have exported this sequence as an RPC and now let's jump into Maya so here we are in Maya with an empty scene and I have the real flow connect plugin installed and when you have that, you get this shelf and you can place, uh, click the icon second from the right to import a real flow uh, particle cache. But you gotta make sure to pick file type RPC, otherwise they're not gonna show up. And you can click any one of these and it's gonna set up an emitter for you with the right file, name, format, padding, all of that. I'll hit create and then you get essentially a Maya particle system. It's kind of hacked to just pull in the real flow cache, but it's exactly the same as if I would have created this with Maya particles. And if I scrub it back, you'll see I have the same cache that I had in real flow. 
But the issue is, which Raymond was having in Redshift in his case, when he creates a light and tries to render, there is no effect. And especially in Redshift, uh, it says that the particle cloud shader is not supported. That's the default shader, which you would use kind of like way back. The, this was used a lot to kind of create sparks and stuff. So that was mostly what it was useful. It's, it was rarely rendered as actual geo. But in the most common path tracers these days, it is rendered as tiny spheres, which you can actually see here. Uh, but the first thing you want to do is you want to assign the standard material for your respective renderer. So I'll go to Redshift and select Redshift material. And then let's go to the particle object and the end particle shape object is where all of these attributes are housed. And you can see points does not look exactly the same as the render. And that's because it is by default considered uh, spheres. So I'll go back and set spheres instead. You can see that this is more or less what we're getting. So we can go to the particle size rollout and just use control left mouse button to tweak this down closer to what we had in um, in the sim. I might put it a little bigger. If I was doing this for, for a product, I would probably have one and more particles and, and smaller particles. But that's particle size. Now we have color. You see the color here? Um, it's kind of a ramp. By default, it's set entirely to white. But we can come in and tweak it, much like we had inside of RealFlow. We have a dark blue. Somewhere around the center, we have a light blue. And then it fades over into, into white. You see, this is now stepped, but I'll set it to smooth on all the handles. And that should kind of make this a little nicer. There aren't exactly the same kind of interpolation handles as we have in RealFlow in order to kind of push things, um, push the color uh, the way that the colors mix, but we can always bias this by putting the handle close to, closer. And um, we don't really see an effect yet. In fact, I want to pause the render for now and just um, just go back to, to the particle cloud that I had initially. Um, and just so I can see this in the viewport. So by default, it doesn't show until you actually change the mapping here. It's going to, the color input is, is constant right now. So whatever color is on top here is going to be rendered uh, or displayed. And what I want to do is I want to map it over speed just as we did inside a real flow. There are other attributes like randomized ID it could be useful to get a bit of kind of distribution, but speed is what we want to use in this case. And then we want to tweak this input max uh, to correspond with the values that we have in RealFlow. And remember that the max was around nine, so that's where I want this to be. So now our fastest particle is going to be white, and the darker ones are going to be on the lower end of the spectrum here. So now we have this um, redshift material again, and picking up the uh, render view, it's not showing, right? So we want to sample this, and the way to do that is go to the redshift material, and you can tweak the color, but we don't want to tweak the color, we want to draw the color from, uh, we want to sample the color from the particles. And I'm going to open Hypershade. I'm going to pull down my Redshift material. And then we're going to come into the Redshift section and look for a node called Redshift User Data Color. And you can plug that to the diffuse color, the output of that node. It's going to default to black before you actually give it an attribute name. So what is that attribute name? I happen to know after doing a bit of particles work in Maya. That is RGB PP. And uh, that's funny because you get to say PP, uh, but it also uh, stands for per particle. So any value that is individual per particle, like the opacity, like the lifespan, like the RGB, is a PP value or a per particle array attribute. But um, for example, right now, particle size is global. All the particles are the same size. So it's not a uh, per particle value. But I just know down here, you'll see RGB PP. That is what's being fed the ramp that we're using up here. So in this case, you'll know from experience, I'll just know by trusting my word when I say, you're gonna wanna type RGB PP in there and your result will be the same as the mapping that we have. And then there's shading on this, obviously. So they, they, they might appear a little darker than you do in the scene. But that's how you get 
the same color representation as you do inside of um, inside of uh, RealFlow. And it's always defaulting to spheres. If you don't want that, if you want it to actually be tiny points, um, I guess you would uh, instance tiny circles facing the camera uh, on each particle and have those um, just um, just instanced using match or something but that's for another video you could also make them a lot smaller and you could instead of using the redshift material you could use a surface shader and they wouldn't be uh, actually shaded but that's a little bit beside the point this is what we were going for the color but i'm not going to stop there uh there are other renderers out there right uh, a lot of you are using arnold that's the standard renderer in maya these days so let's delete the dome light uh, and let's instead of using the redshift material, let's go to Arnold and create an Arnold AI standard surface. So that's now assigned. I'll go to the Arnold shelf and create a sky dome. And then I'll bring up the Arnold renderer. And we pretty much in the same starting position. So how do we get the color we have on the particle object to reflect in the shader? So let's graph this material out, make a little room in here. And in Arnold, it's pretty much the same, but the node is called AI user data color. I'm pulling that in, connecting it to the base color, and typing RGBPP. And there we have it, just like that. Pretty similar. It's nice that a lot of these renders kind of work the same or similar at least. So when you do have to switch for another gig or for another project, whatever reason, uh, you, you kind of know your way around. Last but not least, uh, another renderer that I really like is V-Ray. And V-Ray is kind of built up a lot of the same way as uh, Redshift or vice versa, actually. V-Ray was first, but uh, in this case, let's create a V-Ray material uh, on the V-Ray shelf. And let's create a V-Ray dome light and delete the Arnold sky dome light. And I'll just bring back the V-Ray VFB, a virtual frame buffer, and hit render. And we're kind of in the same situation there. So now we're going to make that shader pull the particle information. And it's a little, just a little differently here in, in V-Ray. So there is a V-Ray user color. There might be a way to actually draw the information using this one. I haven't gotten it to work actually because oh this is annoying by the way <laughs> so the default attribute raw doesn't have diffuse which is pretty much the most common attribute you're going to want so you have to press the three button or use the hamburger menu icon on it and plug that into color and then i tried typing in rgb pp here but i guess it's a different syntax i tried to decipher these this information but it never really worked out for me so i went another route instead there is an um, standard maya utilities something called the particle sampler uh, the particle sampler info has a huge a lot of attributes pretty much anything on the particle you can pull in and there is for example out color and that doesn't seem to be working uh, but there's also rgb pp which is the attribute that we were using and once again we get to say pp um, <laughs> so, uh, still not working. And that brought to mind that sometimes when you're using V-Ray, you have to make these custom attributes. And the way you do that is select object, go to attributes, V-Ray, and in this case, per particle attribute export. Per particle attribute export is going to create a set of attributes on the attribute editor, which is going to go in the bottom section here. And you actually need to check RGB for it to actually export the value. So that's um, an extra step. I guess it's good that we're not exporting stuff we don't need. Maybe that helps with uh, performance. So now it's kind of back up. We can use out color or RGB color interchangeably in this case, but it's nice to keep the convention of using RGB PP in all the cases. But uh, I actually, when I realized this, I tried the user color anyway. Uh, since I now have enabled uh, per particle attribute export, but I still don't really know the syntax that is needed here. So if you do know it, I would love to hear it because um, I think this is maybe a little more surgical or uh, akin to the renderer. I don't know. Whatever. But uh, 
the most straightforward way was to use this. There we really have it. That is how you mimic the, the visualization that you have in RealFlow inside of, um, of Maya when rendering. And I guess this would be pretty similar in other renders as well, uh, but that's for another video. I hope you found it useful. In the layover that I've had of not making videos, I managed to somehow delete my projects folder and that included all the branding for the channel. So I'm really starting from scratch here. If you have suggestions on logo, um, uh, intro openers, templates, whatever, let me know. Maybe I could put that in, but I hope you liked it anyway. And uh, this should be the first of many videos. Uh, if the channel brings you value, Please consider, I mean, becoming a Patreon. And if you don't really think it's motivated to make a monthly contribution, then there's um, buy me a coffee as well. Uh, you can use that to um, to give me a tip if you appreciate the channel. Uh, the details are on the uh, channel about page. And uh, I would love to see what you're working on. So tag me, Dave Splaining, on Instagram, Twitter, uh, or find the Facebook. Facebook page with the same name. We would love to see what you can cook up with this or another one of my techniques and um, I would be happy to spread the word of your work. That's it. See you soon. Thanks for tuning in.